fade away. Some move away to make a way. Now move away the day of rain. I'm going back to the hood. And all the other people take away. I pray for patience, but they make me want to melt their face away. Like I want to make a spray. Now I can make them put the case away. Been thugging all my life. They say I don't deserve to take a break. You'd rather see me catch a case and watch my future fade away.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the DeVos Fieldhouse here in the campus of Hope College for the 2021 Hope Tournament. For game number one, our featured teams are the Comets of Olivet College and the Baldwin-Wallace University Yellow Jackets. Here are tonight's starting lineups. First for the Comets at one forward, a 5'9 senior from Charlotte, number five, Logan Kyer. And at one forward for the Yellow Jackets, a 5'10 senior for Upper Sandusky, Ohio, number 23, Megan Hensel. At one forward for the Comets, a 5'11 sophomore from Ludington, number 21, Zoe Zatarga. And at one forward for the Yellow Jackets, a 5'10 senior from Dublin, Ohio, number 32, Lily Edwards. Starting at center for the Comets, a six-foot junior from Battle Creek, number 25, Rachel Swartz. And at center for the Yellow Jackets, a 6'2 senior from Avon Lake, Ohio, number 35, Megan Scheibelhut. At one guard for the Comets, a 5'9 sophomore from Union City, number three, Logan Allen. And at one guard for the Yellow Jackets, a 5'7 senior from Kirtland, Ohio, number 20, Sydney Snyder. And at the final guard spot for the Comets, a 5'4 junior from Muskegon, number 10, Brianna Alexander. And at the final guard spot for the Yellow Jackets, a 5'7 junior from Ann Arbor, number 22, Izzy Andrews. Olivet College is coached by Peter Sabidi. Baldwin Wallace University is coached by Sherry Herrer. Your officials for this evening, Tim Swain, Don Slater, and Randy Reese. Folks, we do have a correction in the starting lineup. For the Comets at one guard, a 5'6 senior from St. Clair Shores, number four, Alicia Valero. Basketball number 32, Lily Edwards.
Basketball number four, Alicia Bolero. Two points, number 23, Megan Hensel. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 25, Kaylee Ressler. Also number 33, Kira Philpot. Basketball number 32, Lily Edwards. Basket by number 32, Lily Edwards. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number five, Emily Irwin. Also number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. Yellow Jackets foul on number five, Emily Irwin. That is her first, team's first. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number zero, Carolyn Wokley.
Yellow Jackets foul on number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. That is her first, team's second. Two points, number 33, Kira Philpot. Foul on number five, Logan Kyer. That is her first, team's first. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 10, Reagan Schill. Yellow Jackets foul number 25, Kaylee Ressler. That is her first, team's third. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 33, Savannah Pavoni. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 23, Megan Hensel. Also number 32, Lily Edwards. Olivet foul on number 10, Brianna Alexander. That is her first, team's second. Yellow Jackets foul number 33, Kira Philpot. That is her first, team's fourth. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 13, Julia Decker. For the Yellow Jackets, number 22, Izzy Andrews, and 35, Megan Scheibelhut.
Basketball number 35, Megan Scheibelhut. Basketball number 35, Megan Scheibelhut. It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu slash admissions. It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just... Three points, number four, Alicia Bolero. Basketball number 23, Megan Hensel. Three points, number 23, Megan Hensel.
Entering the lineup for the Comets, number five, Logan Kyer. Also number 30, Courtney Ballas. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number five, Emily Irwin. Basket by number 10, Brianna Alexander. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 25, Kaylee Ressler. Yellow Jackets fallen on 21. Yeah. Yellow Jackets fallen number 20, Sydney Snyder. That is her first, team's first.
basketball number 25, Kaylee Ressler. Three points, number 30, Courtney Ballas. Two points, number 32, Lily Edwards. Olivet fouls on number five, Logan Kyer. That is her second team's first. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number four, Alicia Bolero, and number 25, Rachel Swartz. For Baldwin Wallace, number zero, Carolyn Wokley, and 35, Megan Scheibelhut. Yellow Jackets foul number 32, Lily Edwards. That is her first, team's second. Two points, number 32, Lily Edwards. Three points, number five, Emily Irwin. Olivet foul on number 25, Rachel Swartz. That is her first, team's second. Entering the lineup for Olivet, number five, Logan Kyer, and 21, Zoe Zatarga. For Baldwin Wallace, 34, Sylvie Sonneman.
Yellow Jackets foul number zero, Carolyn Wokley. That is her first, team's third. Entering the lineup for Olivet, number 33, Savannah Pavoni. For the Yellow Jackets, number 10, Reagan Schill, and 23, Megan Hensel. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 14, Kayla Paul. Basket by number 21. Zoe is a targa. Basketball number four, Alicia Bolero. Basketball number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 32, Lily Edwards. Also number five, Emily Irwin. Three points, number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. Three points, number four, Alicia Bolero. Three points, number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. At the end of the first half, your score, Baldwin Wallace, 39, Olivet, 19.
can look back at clients and realize that when I started with them in my mid-30s, I was one of many professionals in their life. But since then, their doctors retired, their attorneys retired, their ministers retired, all the key people in their life retired, but we're still there. And over time, we end up being very, very close to our clients. It's very hard to talk about your financial history without talking about your family history. We get to know it, we keep it confidential, and you can't help but begin to love these people. At Lawrence and Vanderswaar, we are interested in the history of our community. This farm once belonged to Albertus Van Ralty, founding father of the city of Holland. And this house, built by his son Ben in 1872, has been known through the years as the Maples, due to the large trees in the front yard planted by Van Ralty himself. These trees stand today because of the industry and vision of Albertus Van Ralty. Today, the DeGraff Nature Center taps the maples and demonstrates how maple syrup was made centuries ago. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our... for your spot now they think you forgot all the times you was down bad and they laughed at you now you up now they mad at you taking shots throwing jabs at you observing the game and watching the field and you either fake or you real never been fan of the snake slide to your back and smile on your face no it's not up for the bait gotta be you if you want to be great you gotta stay true through all of the hate eyes on the prize no time for the fake time for the fake saying, wow, you came in, thanks for coming in, and, and uh, you know, this is what your investment did. It's, it's so much more than that. There's so much more going on in their lives than just these investments, and it's good to understand that totality so that you can say, well, you know, I know there's a better way of doing this, or I have a resource. Uh, I know, you know, there's some other resources that we can help you with here. So it's, it's not just 
financial planning. It's serving people. It's serving people and loving on people. And that's very joyful. Over the last several years, the museum has acquired a substantial collection of artworks made by artists from the Yoruba ethnic group in Nigeria. And when Ann Heath mentioned to me that she was thinking about teaching a seminar on African art, I thought it would be a great opportunity to get her and her students involved in researching our collection and figuring out a way to exhibit it. We work with the Kreising Art Museum to help the um, director curate shows, exhibitions that he has on his schedule, and do the primary source research for him. Um, and that will then turn out to be the labels, the wall text, the catalogs for um, the works in the, in the show. This class offers an opportunity for experiential learning at the highest level. The discipline of art history is basically the study of artworks that allows us to build up an understanding of individual artists, then from the understanding of individual artists, we build up an understanding of different schools and movements, and then from the understanding of those different schools and movements, we build up an understanding of entire historical periods. I don't think I've ever done anything like this before. Um, it was definitely eye-opening and super challenging. Um, it's a lot harder because we we're not finding books that give us the answers to our questions. Um, we're not looking at um, people who have already analyzed the work. It's kind of like we're analyzing it ourselves, but also through the lens and perspective of the artists themselves and other artists at that time. It's been difficult, but it's also been really rewarding. So like when you do find something, it's like, finding like like you know finding the real gold amongst the fool's gold and like actually like getting the thing you need and it's so much more rewarding than being like well of course like i have this book um but yeah i've had to like take like some like different approaches like definitely like researching deeper and like learning like don't give up like you're gonna have to like try a lot harder <laughs> they're an opportunity for students to really put their skills into into action um by doing research that's often primary source research. That means nobody has done it before. And so they have to learn that kind of detective skills on how do you go out and find information that isn't readily available. So they have to be creative in their thinking. They have to have a lot of initiative. They have to be nimble. Um, and they certainly have to work together. This is interesting because it's like working as a team. So even though I, I'm writing my own paper on like, um, Julie Ladipo and like Nigerian contemporary theater. Um, I'm still like checking in with my classmates and sometimes like we find stuff like, oh, like I found this JSTOR article or I found this on Artnet, um, like swapping. So it's interesting being part of like a research community. Um, even if they don't go into the arts as a career, these kinds of experiences, project management, follow through, collaboration, initiative, self-teaching, these are all the kinds of experiences that are gonna hold them in good stead, whether they pursue an, a career in the arts or if they take opportunities outside of the arts. These kinds of, um, the kind of work they do in our department is completely relevant and helpful in lots of different uh, career paths and vocations. This is definitely not a typical undergrad art history course. This is much closer to uh, graduate school work or even to the kind of professional work that's done in museums and commercial art galleries. I've been a museum curator and director for more than 25 years now and I've been involved over the course of my career in hiring dozens of people for jobs in museums and the number one criteria is always whether they've done museum work before and this course has given students that kind of background.
Vincent and van der Zwart, we're interested in the history of our community. When 26-year-old jeweler Jacob Raven came to Holland in 1889, the northwest corner of 8th Street and River Avenue was already home to the thriving Holland City State Bank. Raven told bank personnel that he wanted to build a clock above the bank to keep the town on time, and it wouldn't cost them a cent. True to his word, Raven raised the funds with donations from merchants and local factories. High above the city streets, the tower was completed in 1892. Holland's clock tower still ticks high above 8th Street, watching over a town that still loves to run on time. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our future. Did you remember to bring the GPS? Nope. Oh. Well, you have an app on your phone to tell us how to get where we're going? I do not. Really? So you have an actual map, like the kind that are hard to fold? Uh-uh. You just know where you're going? No idea. Don't be this guy when it comes to financial planning. LVZ Advisors. We'll help get you there. Hey, we're all a little lost. Do uh, you know where the lake is? Yeah. Basket by number 20, Sydney Snyder.
Three points, number 23, Megan Hensel. Two points, number 22, Izzy Andrews. Timeout, Olivet. 30 second timeout. Entering the lineup for Olivet. Number 13, Julia Decker. For the Yellow Jackets, number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. Basket by number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. Entering the lineup for Olivet, number 30, Courtney Ballas. Also number 33, Savannah Pavoni. For the Yellow Jackets, number zero, Carolyn Wokley. Yellow Jackets foul number 25, Kaylee Ressler. That is her second team's first.
Olivet foul number 13, Julia Decker. That is her first team's first. Basket was good by number five, Emily Irwin. Three points, number zero, Carolyn Wokley. Three points, number 25, Kaylee Ressler. <laughs> Olivet foul on number 13, Julia Decker. That is her second, team's second. Three points, number five, Emily Irwin. Entering the lineup for Olivet, number 34, Clara Schulz. For the Yellow Jackets, number 10, Reagan Schill. Number 14, Kayla Paul. And number 23, Megan Hensel. Three points, number 34, Sylvie Sonneman. Basketball number zero, Carolyn Wokley. Entering the line of Olivet, number four, Alicia Valero, number five, Logan Kyer, and number 10, Brianna Alexander. For the Yellow Jackets, number 22, Izzy Andrews, and number 30, Maraid La Liberty.
Three points, number 30, Maraid La Liberty. Yellow Jackets foul number 23, Megan Hensel. That is her first, team's second. At the end of the third quarter, Baldwin Wallace, 67, Olivet, 19. Doesn't this guitar sound so good? We've intentionally never had minimum account size.
Basket by number 10, Brianna Alexander. Three points, number 21, Susie Nemec. Basket by number 10, Brianna Alexander. Three points, number 21, Susie Nemec. Three points, number 10, Reagan Schill. Timeout, Yellow Jackets, substitution timeout. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 13, Julia Decker, and 21, Zoe Zatarga. For the Yellow Jackets, number zero, Caroline Oakley. Number 11, Alec Johnson. And number 45, Megan Jurassic. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 12, Bella Valent. For the Comets, number 33, Savannah Pavoni. Two points, number 12, Bella Valent. Three points, number 11, Alec Johnson.
Two points, number 12, Bella Valent. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 12, Maya Kelly, and number 30, Courtney Ballas. For the Yellow Jackets, number 13, Sadie Arend, and number 42, Emma Nick. Yellow Jackets fouls on number 12, Bella Valent. That is her first, team's first. Yellow Jackets foul number 13, Sadie Arend. That is her first, team's second. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 34, Clara Scholes. Olivet foul on number 30, Courtney Ballas. That is her first, team's first. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 22, Madison Kaufman. For the Yellow Jackets, number 21, Susie Nemec. Entering the lineup for the Comets, number 32, Summer Smith.
Three points, number 42, Emma Nick. Olivet foul on number 30, Courtney Ballas. That is her second, team's second. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 45, Megan Jurassic. Basketball number 30, Courtney Ballas. Entering the lineup for Olivet, number three, Logan Allen. Three points, number 13. Sadie Arend. Yellow Jackets fouls on number 13, Sadie Arend. That is her second, team's third. Entering the lineup for the Yellow Jackets, number 12, Bella Valent. Three points, number 11, Alec Johnson.
Your final score, Baldwin Wallace, 95, Olivet, 29.